Thank you for watching these interviews with the Stereophonica today. We are with one of the most important Norwegian bands. Thanks for being with us and welcome Orion's Belt. Very good, thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, the first thing I, I want to ask, uh, the, there is a 1985 famous Norwegian model called Orion's Belt. Have you seen it? I've seen it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Did it have something to do with the name of the band? Yeah, it does. Uh, we. I think it first started out as a name of a name of a song on the first album, and yeah. we were going to call the band something else. But uh, yeah, we uh, we were so new when we recorded our first album, so um, I guess like the best option uh, seemed to be uh, 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 Urion Spelte, which is the name of the of this uh, kind of. I don't know. It's kind of like a underground <laughs> thriller from uh, from Norway, uh, which is. Uh, yeah, situated in Svalbard, which is al almost like the North Pole. It's, it's like this island, really, really up north. Yeah, it's about three sailors there that look forward yeah. to, to live in a. They, they found a, a Soviet uh, building or something like that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's really, uh, yeah, it's a great thriller. And uh, yeah, we love the actor as well. He's from, from Bergen, which is like our hometown. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's really nice. Okay. Last week, uh, you have released the long-awaited album Villa Amorini. The name Villa Amorini originates from a legendary night in Spartan Bergen, right? Mm, that's right. It was. Okay. Uh, uh, it was owned. It, it was a, at first. It was a restaurant owned by uh, uh, our bass player's grandparents. In like yeah. the seventies and eighties, it was like a, a, a fine dining restaurant. Uh, with kind of like this Spanish theme, <laughs> and then yeah. uh, and then he, uh, his father took over the club and he started this uh, uh, this kind of like a nightclub DJ place in the nineties, which was really uh, like a happening place. So we thought it was it doesn't exist anymore. Now it's a really cool venue, which is called Landmark. But uh, we thought it was cool to like pay uh, pay tribute to this uh, rocking place in the nineties. Yeah, did you guys went to the bar? Actually, or, or no? I think Chris, uh, the bass player, went there when he was uh, when he was a kid. He saw some saw some concerts there, but it it didn't exist when we uh, when we started going out. So, okay, tell us a little bit about Villa Morini. I, I mean, uh, it's it's kind of like a word music. You guys have been called like uh, psychedelic rock music, but what do you think about the sound of the Villa Morini? Well, I think we we kind of um, we try not to focus uh, anything uh, on like uh, what kind of genre we is when yeah. when we when we record. We just want to make the music uh, that feels natural. Uh, so that's like one of the things. I think we I think we kind of suit well in in some of the different boxes that people put us in in, in like uh, psychedelic rock or like uh, chill, uh, more like loungey stuff. But uh, I guess we don't think about it too much. We don't. We just like make the music that we that we enjoy. So the recording process of the uh, the album Villa Marini was was um, uh, like the main recordings were done in uh, in some days that we just stayed for hours and hours in the studio. So a lot of the songs are made the, that week when we recorded most of the stuff, um, and that's that was really cool to us. We 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 try to stay fresh all the time and just let every idea get to the table and we we kind of lay everything out and, and try everything so so a lot of the singles like the one called bean and the one called lotus they are actually made in the studio there on the fly okay that one was made uh by matthias stages another great next one of the norwegian music how was it working with him he's uh so cool he he has uh, mixed everything for us and uh and we know him from way back you know the 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 um Kimoga and Christy are the two in the band. They have played in the. They have played with Matthias for many years in different kinds of bands. So we know him. We know him really well. But uh, but he's so musical and he and he takes. Uh, he can take like a thing that just sounds like bass and drums and guitar and make it sound like a spaceship or it's like a travel to another planet or something. So so he's 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 like a like a studio genius so uh, and he does so much stuff all the time now now he's working with uh, artists like girly red and he and he does so much great stuff so uh, so it's really like an honor to to be working with him okay 
how do you feel that your audience has reacted to Vila Marini, especially your audience outside Norway? It's so great. I think uh, we were we were so um, sad that we had to postpone our album twice. It was a meeting. It was it would be out last year, and then we we were really hoping to to release the album in in February and travel outside. We want to go back to the states and go back to Mexico and stuff. But uh, um, of course, because of the pandemic, in, in none of this has happened. So uh, we try to stay really active on on like to talk with people on social medias and uh, and the and the reactions and the uh, reviews have been so good so it's really really cool to to hear so much great feedback from people all over the world so um, yeah it's an honor actually we need like two or three reviews of the album uh, uh, sorry what did you say and that we did like two or three reviews of the album actually yeah yeah, yeah. that's so great i've been reading all of this and, and it's um yeah, it's kind of special to to see people all around the world. You 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 can watch how people stream now, and it's it's really cool to see people in so many different uh, countries that that are listening to this it's kind of small band from Norway. So it's yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, you were talking about uh, Mexico. You did a featuring with Paulina Sotomayor. Conversations, conversaciones. This one is yeah. in English and Spanish version. Tell us yeah. how is your relationship with her and with Mexico. Well, um, to take the song first, it was like uh, one of those songs that um, our bass player Chris um, has. Uh, he, he did write the song, so he had he had like like the most of the song finished when we when we came to the studio, and then we thought it would be really cool to have uh, like uh, another singer to do like the first verse. And then we asked this friend of ours from uh, uh, this great Norwegian uh, artist, she Koswe, she did the English uh, version. Uh, yeah. But then I don't remember, um, I think it was someone from our record label that was like, okay, but it would be cool to do like several uh, other versions. And then through some friends, we heard of, uh, uh, of uh, Paulina and I really like the band that she has with her brother, the the band Sotomayor, I think is is really cool. They they are so inventive and and uh, and makes such great music. So so we just asked her, and and we haven't actually met because uh, if, yeah, I would love to go there and and record with her, but she's we couldn't do it. So she we just sent sent her the files, and then she recorded the vocals in Mexico and sent them back to us. So, uh, so it was like a true internet experience. <laughs> so, but that worked out really, really cool, and 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 she's such a talented uh, singer. So that was that was really that was really good. And and also, uh, I don't know, like Mexico, we we've only been there once, like two years ago. Uh, but we talk about it all the time. It's like uh, I think uh, none of us has had been there before. Uh, but when we uh, arrived we were just like eating and drinking and meeting new people for two days and yeah. played this great show so we the only thing we want to do is is uh, like return to to mexico city it was it was so great okay um are you planning or guys are thinking about doing some other featurings with latin american uh, people yeah if the if the if the possibility is uh turns up it, it would be really cool i think we we really like like a lot of uh, latin american stuff and uh, also like from way back from the 60s and a lot of like brazilian stuff and mexican stuff so so uh, so uh, i think it kind of fits our music really really well and uh, i guess it's it's just we're kind of open to to uh, to work with uh, with anyone that has like a unique voice. So it could be like an instrumentalist or a vocalist from from any country. Really, it's it's. Uh, I just think it's interesting to go outside your own limits and try to meet new people from all over the world. That's that's one of the great great things about music is that you you really connect with people on on another level than the language or or culture. So. It's really great. Okay, considering that you are not a normal band, I mean, like a normal band, what is your creation process? Does the pandemic affect this process or your music? Um, I think uh, the main difference for us as a band now is is uh, is that when we started this project, it was 
all about uh, being like free. We didn't want to 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 kind of put any barriers on or like limits to what we were going to do. And we try not to think too much. So, so this is like a like one of the first times I've had a band where we where we uh, try really hard not to think too much about stuff. <laughs> so when we make stuff, we just okay, that could work, that could work. What if we put these two parts together and everybody's really open? So it could be like a blues kind of riff, or it could be like punk rock or it could be like really jazzy stuff and and we don't really we don't really care as long as we like it so so i think that's that's like the main difference for 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 me at least it's like this is the first time i i feel like really uh free uh making music and we don't we don't pay attention to like if if the, any songs are going to be on the radio or if it's going to be like a hit song or anything so i think that that makes the music much better maybe are you guys sure. planning a Latin American tour when the conditions allows you? Hopefully we can uh, return as soon as possible. It would be great. We were trying to make plans for uh, US and uh, and maybe like Mexico, a Latin American tour when we were planning the release of this album. So uh, hopefully when everything is settles down with the pandemic, we can, uh, we can return uh, as soon as possible. It would be great. Yeah. Okay. What's next for the band in the near future? We're trying to uh, return to the live uh, scene. We had to cancel and move a lot of shows now around the, because everything is closed in in uh, in Norway has been for for some weeks now. So we have some Norwegian shows that we have to uh, do in June and July and August and. Uh, trying to do like some some Norwegian shows when we can't travel to any other country and then we have uh, so many new projects there's some new songs coming in in uh, in uh, uh, like the near future and we're working on several different like small projects that we want to do so um, so uh, there's a lot of stuff but we for now we live in three different cities so we have to uh, work from our home studios and send files to yeah. each other but uh, yeah it's it's okay we uh, we're managing <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you for being with us in the stereophonic we wish you the best and we hope to see you soon on tour doing what you like the most that is music thank you so much thank you for having us <laughs>